Today we're going to continue on with the education again. I also, I also want to reiterate, I saw this in a couple of forums and I'm ruffling feathers and it still needs to be said, this is not an art. If you've been doing this class for a while, you realize this is just a software. You're tracing no more than a coloring book with a few extra crayons to work with. Let's keep it moving. So anyways, today we have a script. Uh, I'm from Los Angeles. Uh, I'm not living in Los Angeles right now, but anyways, I'm from Los Angeles. So I always pick out something that's LA centric. <laughs> so today we have the Dodger script. I actually um, went and found this. You can uh, Google this uh, Dodgers font and you can download it. And that's exactly what I did. I took it into Illustrator. I made it into, uh, I created uh, some outlines. I made page objects or vector objects out of them in uh, Illustrator. And then I co copied them, excuse me, and pasted them right in here. Now, the one good thing, again, is success leads clues. So when you're doing something like this, which is really cool, um, you can go and look and see how other people have, uh, or the professionals have went and digitized this. So I looked it up, right, and I saw that the Dodgers, I went to the Dodgers store, their store, and I looked and see to see how this was digitized. Now this is 3D Puff. We'll get into this in, a, in future classes, but the digitizing is gonna remain the same. Now I'm not gonna do this little swoop here, but you can see exactly how things were digitized. Let's jump back into Hatch and let's get started. So it looked like they started here, so we're gonna use our digitized blocks here. We're gonna get right up in here and then we're gonna right click, we're gonna right click, right click, we're going to right click. Now remember from the last class, I told you, you don't have to worry about being so perfect. And so I don't want you to, because we know we can always go in and fix it. Let's leave a little bit of overlap. Let's press H and let's do T. And now we can go in and we can perfect things how we want it to look, right? So we come in here. And also I want you to remember that we talked last week our other day, actually I'm doing kind of one of days right now. We talked yesterday or whenever you're watching this that we should be paying attention to our start and our finishes so we can get proper pathing. So we started up here and we're finishing here, right? So we can try to continue on because the next thing we want to do is we're going to go all the way around, right? We're going to go all the way around from here, all the way around here. So that means we can start anywhere really. So if this ended here, we'll make sure this starts here to keep those trims down. All right, so let's keep it moving. Uh, I think I want to turn this blue because it is Dodger blue. All right, and then now the reason why you're seeing this is because it's, it's considered large. So just turn off auto split and you won't see that anymore. Let's measure this. Seven millimeters is fine. See, it'd be great. Anyways, so let's keep it moving. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come right around here and we're going to continue on now. Uh, remember, we should be having a little bit of muscle memory right now. So let's go just a little bit up here, do a bit of overlap. We should have some muscle memory. These are right clicks. And that's all I'm trying to get you to do is just get some muscle memory. Just keep going. Remember that we have stitch angles that we're concerned about to so try to go straight across so you can minimize some of your editing it and if you don't like something remember you can always go back so let's go right across here and these are all right clicks right now so let's just right click all the way around and again don't worry about being perfect because we know we have the reshape tool that really helped me out a lot and again with the muscle memory. I, I think if you've been following along, you should really be pretty much already having the muscle memory to kind of get things done. Now, script is another thing. Now, uh, from what I saw and what I've been reading, letters make the majority of the money that are in, that's in embroidery, right? That's not gonna come out right, but that's okay. So now let's, uh, Click the object tool, blue. Um, letters 
make up the majority. That actually doesn't look bad, right? Letters make up the majority of the money in the embroidery business. Now, when I say also that embroidery, or excuse me, that digitizing is an art, you should do it yourself. Obviously, when you get busy, you can't do it yourself. But what's really cool is you can have a digitizer do something for you and if you don't like something you need to make some small changes you don't have to tear up your whole day waiting on him to return a file you can just make the small changes yourself and keep it moving let's see what's next so the whole o and then we're going to do this next and then you have to worry about what comes first and last here so we'll do that two left clicks there these are all right clicks and we'll go all the way around all the way around here. These are all right clicks. Right click, right click. Again, this is not an art and that's a wrap. And again, if you wanna make some corrections, which I probably would right here, if you wanted to make some corrections, just hit your T, your H, and you can come through here and make all the changes you want to make coming through here. This is one thing, like I told you, was very liberating for me was knowing that I didn't have to be perfect and I can just come through here and kind of, you know, do what I needed to do and then make everything look good. It really stepped my digitizing up and my confidence level once I realized, like, oh, man, this isn't, you know, anything too slick. And this is why I say... Digitizing is not an art. It is an absolute tracing with a few tools and anybody can do this. And I'm hoping you're starting to see this now that this is really easy to do. It's not hard to do. It is just learning tools and building up muscle memory, right? So that's looking pretty good to me. Let's move on. Let's hit O. Let's go over here and let's move on. To the T, let's get a little bit of overlap here. And then I'm gonna start right off, right clicking through here. We'll hit enter there, and now we'll go into our D. So we know that this should have started. Let's say we started this here. See, we got three trims over there, that's not good. So if you wanna, sometimes you can get lost and not re realize what you're doing. So you wanna start that in one place. And then we wanted to end this here. And you see those trims change right away, right? So we know that's cool. And then you have a trim here between the D and the O. So you're all good. So try to keep up. And that's, that's the next thing about digitizing, right? So again, when I say digitizing is not an art, it is not. But there are settings that you need to pay attention to, right? So uh, later on, we'll get more into the compensation, uh, pull compensation, the push and the pull of satin stitches and, and worrying about gaps and other technical information. But again, that's not art. It is 100% just settings that you need to be concerned about. Just like pathing here, like worrying about your pathing. That's not an art. That is just worrying about how many trims you're gonna have and worrying about your sequencing of events. And you have this like layers panels here so you can move things around to make sure that you're not uh, doing things out of sequence. Because remember in production, one trim or one color change is six or seven seconds and you do that over a hundred hats or you know a thousand shirts or whatever. Then you're like, man, I really have added on a bunch of time here. So these are all right clicks coming up. And we're gonna go around this D. Now, I'm not gonna, get, again, I'm not gonna digitize the whole thing for you because, I mean, you should be following through and this should all be starting to like get into your muscle memory now. Cause now I don't even think about, like I remember when I first started this, I was like, man, how do you do this? And I had to, physically say in, out, in, out when I was doing this because I was getting lost and I didn't know which way I was going. And now it's all in, in the muscle memory. And this is why I do these classes, man, because over here, I'm going to show you that I did finish and uh, I connected here and I did exactly that. I just went down here and I didn't go all the way. That's why it's good. I stopped. 
I didn't go all the way through, so I just came through here. And I mean, you can look and see exactly what I did here. And I basically just took exactly what you see here and I just followed along. So that's exactly what you should do. Just kind of follow along. There's no like uh, caveats or gotchas here. This was kind of weird here, but again, once you stitch this out, don't worry about what it looks like in the software. Once you stitch it out, it should be cool. You definitely should stitch this out. Uh, all I did here is uh, just kind of went through. Now you look, I didn't get any more than two trims because you just want to that one trim here and I just went all the way through and you just keep up and if, if I really wanted to keep up like with everything you just come through if you get a little lost just come through hit your HQ and just look at where everything started and go back to the next one and see where everything started uh, there's another little trick and I, I, don't, I don't have it now and I don't know if I can do it now let's see here T and S I told you before in another class that here, when you see these little triangles, that's the end of something. So when you don't see a triangle, that means you're going all the way through. And if you catch a triangle somewhere in between what you're trying to do, then that means that there's a trim and then that'll give you a good clue on where you should go. But I only see this one triangle. That means that I, I only have the one trim. There are two trims there. Yeah, that's all I have there. So anyways, I'm going to leave you with it right now. Your homework is just to get this done and do it until you're comfortable and stitch it out. Um, I guess I'll leave the caveat to say that this is only for educational pur purposes. <laughs> I'm going to leave this file for you in the first comment and in, in the description so you can take a look at what I did. But just go around. <clears throat> excuse me. And remember, success leaves clues. So just go around. Look find other logos to do, find other shapes to do, and start doing more script. Download the script and do the alphabet. That could be a good uh, homework assignment. I'll see you guys in the next class. Peace.